What's up, YouTube? Capital G here, talking about this pendulum revolution and I guess its uh, effect on the secondary markets. And I know that we're in the age of the pendulum because, you know, Arc V started over a year ago, but to this point, really, it's kind of just been the Cleford show. Like, Cleford have been the only pendulum based deck that has really shown us how competitive and how good a pendulum based deck can be. And it's it set the, the standard for a competitive pendulum based deck, and obviously, its effects that it could have on the secondary market you mean maybe death spots had a little bit of impact on the regional level and i don't think that yosinju really counts even though that they have pendulum cards like a lot of people didn't even play the pendulums but if you're looking at the events that took place over the weekend not just the uh, ycs obviously that was dominated by cosmos but if you're looking at the regional level and the ycs as a whole i'm talking like top 32 and all that good stuff you saw that um <clears throat> Magic Spectres made an immediate impact. Performages and Powers were topping events. Uh, they topped uh, YCS. Uh, San Jose as well. You even saw a little bit of Ignites at YCS San Jose. Um, I believe a player got 35th place, and we might even start seeing that on the regional level, but we're finally starting to see it really affect the secondary market, and the reason why you didn't see it happen so much with Cleforts was Cleefort were, I mean, they were 100% archetype-based where all the cards really only worked with Cleefort cards. Like, you couldn't special summon. Billy Break had a, a very interesting thing. He was, he was talking about how Cleeforts were kind of restricted where you couldn't, you know, special summon any, any other monsters as long as you had your Cleefort scales. And these newer decks really don't have those restrictions. And you're starting to see these really good generic cards that can be used, you know, across the board of all these new Pendulum uh, decks. You're starting to see them kind of like double and triple in price. And I'm kind of surprised that it took this long. I don't think that there are a lot of players that were too skeptical that were thinking, ah, oh, man, Magic Spectres aren't really going to do anything in the TCG. Like, from my point of view, I never understood why Magic Spectres didn't do anything in the in the OCG. I just, I thought when they came to the TCG, they were just going to tear shit up. And, you know, they're kind of doing that. But there are cards like, you know, the Vector Pendulum, which, if I'm not mistaken, I believe this card may have just gotten limited in the OCG. There's the Luster Pendulum, which it seems like if you're running in any Pendulum-based deck, I mean, even Deathbots, like, you might as well just throw a few copies of this card in there because it kind of searches for anything and you obviously can send it to the graveyard with your other scale so if you make a full scale then you can just summon your stuff back and potentially make a rank four right then and there you have this guy the um the uh, ignister prominence which uh, this was another card where it's like man it was an ultra rare out of clash of rebellions you know initially the card was dirt cheap if you were going to play a pendulum based deck you probably should have picked it up then because this card is so important because it uh it doesn't target the effect so actually it is one of the easiest outs for pendulum decks to you know basically throw at their opponent when their opponent has a dark destroyer or a forerunner or something like that or maybe your opponent only has one um they only have one magic specter monster obviously magic specters can't be targeted so you summon this guy you get rid of it and then you just potentially win but it really is showing you um if you're gonna play a pendulum based deck i think you're going to have to be willing to spend a lot of money moving forward and this isn't even without like this isn't even mentioning the obvious eccentric archfiend a card that's like anywhere from 60 to 75 dollars depending on where you buy it which is a card that you know it outs floodgates and kills pretty much any monster so it's like a fantastic card and you know what this reminds me of with all these pendulum based decks and the fact that they're kind of all splashing in the same cards and then you get your archetype specific cards that you know is what makes the decks feel different this actually reminds me of the very early stages of Yu-Gi-Oh, where you had these inc you had these crazy powerful monsters that were like pretty much staple you could fit them in any deck Cards like uh, Thousand Eyes, or excuse me, Tribe Infecting Virus, Breaker the Magical Warrior, cards that offered a ton of utility, could still be big, could still be big beaters, and you could just kind of put them in everything. And it, it feels like these cards are becoming kind of like the newer versions of those. Even if you're playing a deck that should have been kind of budget, like Ignites or you know Despots, decks where the 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 general populace of Yu-Gi-Oh just kind of looked over them, it's like man. Now those decks are going to get kind of expensive just because they are pendulum based and nothing else. So, you know, this is just um, 
I guess uh, a bit of information that you guys should take hold of, because if you're planning on playing pendulum decks and this is even disregarding Arch Phoenix centric, disregarding down the tube, the fact that we're going to get Cyber Dragon Infinity and I predict that to be a hundred and fifty dollar card. I think before you invest in playing anything pendulum, you've got to look at these cards and think, is it really worth it? Because you're probably going to want to get a copy of this guy. You're probably going to want to pick up two lusters. You're probably going to want to get, you know, maybe two to three copies of, well, probably just like two copies copies of Arch Phoenix centric, maybe one in the main deck, one in the side deck, et cetera, et cetera. So let me know what you guys think. Is this, is this kind of like turning you guys off from pendulums? The fact that a lot of these cards are so good and so generic that it's kind of like inflating the price of them. And tell me what you guys think. Thank you for watching as always.